You know, to this point in time, we've covered a lot of the essential elements of the world of wealth management, mainly technical topics. We focused on everything from asset management to legacy and estate planning. But one area we haven't covered that we'd like to talk about now is the area of neuroscience and neuroeconomics. In 2017, Dr. Richard Thaler won the Nobel Prize for Economics for his life's work, research, and study in the area of behavioral finance. And behavioral tendencies tend to influence, Linda, a lot of our decisions, if not most of our decisions. So my question for you is, how is it that otherwise seemingly rational individuals can make such irrational decisions when it comes to money? Well, first of all, I love that you said seemingly rational because <laughs> that's really on target. We do seem to be rational beings. If you go back thousands of years, Plato said that every one of us had inside his head um, both a, a wild horse, and that would be the sort of emotional part of our brain, mm -hmm and a rider, and that would be the rational part of the brain. And, and he and Socrates both talked about how it was the, the duty of the rider to be in control of the horse. Well, modern neuroscience has completely put that to rest, um, that the more important and complex any decision is, the more solidly it is lodged in the limbic or emotional part of the human brain. Oh, wow. What's so fascinating about this, you've probably at some point in the past studied the sort of nature-nurture debate, sure. and um, it turns out that we are all born with certain tendencies the behavioral economists call these biases that really affect literally everybody. And when we make financial decisions, they come from these emotional places. In a moment, you're going to be able to view a narrated visual presentation that will sort of acquaint you with the six most important and, and impactful uh, biases that will affect your clients. And you'll see this red thread of how do the biases affect this particular financial decision, for example. One of the things that you want to keep in mind, though, is that advisors are also human beings and we have the same biases that our clients do. And they show up in some really interesting ways. So be prepared to take kind of a ride with us as you learn about your clients and yourself.